Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Delaney's okay. Taryn Langley inbox. Aaron is hopping. In, Aaron in North Vancouver. This is not the worst damage the trophy has seen. The emotional damage from what this trophy has seen is, is far worse. I say the emotional damage from what it hasn't seen. Like there's emotional damage that that cup has done in Vancouver. Yeah. On three occasions. That's right. Two in particular. That's a good point. One fairly recently. We're joined now by TSN scouting director Craig Button. How are you, sir? I am really good. Will the Stanley Cup go on long-term injury now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. LTIR. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Batman gets some relief on that. Hey, Craig, um, congratulations. You got out your Craigslist ahead of the uh, uh, July 23rd a- entry draft. You have Owen Power at number one on your Craigslist. It's such good, good reading. I, I love it. Uh, how, how much has his game progressed, especially since playing at the World Championships? Yeah, uh, significantly. I mean, uh, I mean, every time you, you watch Owen play, and I've watched him play since he was a midget at 15, you've seen this steady, strong uh, 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 improvement and, advan- and, and advancement. Think about this. He goes to the World Championships, you know, named to the team, a younger, some younger players. George Glant doesn't know him. He's heard about him. And, you know, he, so, so he's going to – you know, feel it out, see what he can do. He didn't just put him in there. He put him in there. Oh, geez, maybe he deserves a little more ice time. Hmm. Okay, let's see what else he can do. And 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 then as the tournament progressed, Owen progressed. His ice time improved and increased, right to the point where he was not just one of their top four defensemen. He was a key player on a gold medal winning team. And I think that that really demonstrates Owen in in in, in a nutshell. You know, you don't know him. You watch him, you start to go, okay, let's give him a chance, and he just gains your confidence from a coaching point of view. And I think that's what he does. He's got, he's got all the attributes of a number one defenseman. You've got to be able to control the game. You've got to have command of the game in all its critical areas and all its uh, challenging situations. And he continuously meets those challenges. He continuously rises to the, to the occasion, so to speak. And to me, those are the hallmarks of a number one defenseman, and I think he has them all. Canucks picked ninth, and uh, you have Dylan Gunther of the Edmonton Oil Kings at number nine. I realize things aren't necessarily going to fall that way, but uh, you have him at number nine. He's a right winger with the Oil Kings. What can you tell us about him? Well, he's good. I will tell you this. I'm going to do a mock draft next Tuesday. Okay. Right? So I'll look forward to I'll, that. I'll make sure that that mock draft, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little glimpse so when we chat about it, you'll Beautiful. have an idea. And Beautiful. So. I don't think Dylan Gunther will be there at nine when the, when the Vancouver Canucks pick, but he's a slick offensive player. He, he's, he's equally adept at making plays as he is to scoring goals and, you know, kills penalties. He's a really well-rounded player. I, I don't think that he's this exceptionally dynamic player, but I think he's a really solid player that can add a lot of different elements to your team. Goal scoring, playmaking. He, he, he's really smart. He's really good, uh, you know, in, in terms of playing below the circles and in tight areas. And he wants to drive the net and take the puck to the net, as well as I mentioned, he's a good penalty killer. So I think with Dylan, you're, you're getting a really, really strong, well-rounded, uh, you know, what you would call more complete at this age than the vast majority of players. And, you know, we can debate whether uh, he's got that exceptional dynamic ability. Maybe he develops it. Maybe he doesn't. But I do know this about him. He, he's a really good player, but I don't think he'll be there at nine. And remember, I'm, I'm projecting potential. And we, 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 could, we, could, we could discuss it. And, you know, if you told me you think he should be five, I, I don't know if I would be able to quibble with you. I think it's close enough between players in different spots from even three to 12 that, that, that we could quibble about uh, that, that I wouldn't really have a, a big issue about moving one, one guy to that spot and the other guy to the other spot. Uh, Craig, uh, I want to get your thoughts on uh, something happening out in Vancouver. Uh, I get the sense talks are picking up between the Canucks and Edler and Hamannick. They're both UFAs. 
A lot of people uh, think uh, Adler, the foot speed's not there, Craig. He's getting a little bit older. But the Canucks want him back, clearly, because they're talking with him. Uh, what are your thoughts on Adler? Yeah, you know, I think number one, uh, Rick, is that you have to recognize what a player is still capable of and, and, and what your expectations are. And then hopefully, you know, you, you know when you've when you got the opportunity to sign a contract that is commensurate, with what that player's abilities and capabilities are, is that it matches. So I think the way you described Alex is, is, is the way I would describe him, but you got to pay him that way. But you also got to say, hey, listen, it's great to have Alex Edler back. We, he, you know, he, he, he's at comfort food. You know what he can do. You know what he can't do any longer. But you better be able to put him in a spot where he's not overextended. Because if he's overextended, you've you got big problems. So if you want to sign Alex Edler, you want to sign Travis Hamanick, you got to find that you got to find the value that's commensurate with their skill level right now with a new contract. But you cannot stop there. You cannot stop there and just kind of go, okay, we got two defensemen signed. In my view, they're bottom pair defensemen on a good team. And if you're going to scale them up the lineup, you're going to have big problems. Uh a lot of negativity in Edmonton, uh, Craig, with the Duncan Keith uh, trade, the acquisition by the Oilers. Your thoughts on Duncan Keith? Geez, I didn't hear any disappointment from Ken Holland. <laughs> well, Where's the he, disappointment coming from? Uh, media and fans. Uh, uh, Ken, yeah. uh, we, we just played a clip of Ken Holland ripping into a reporter. Like, Craig, there's a lot of negativity in Edmonton about acquiring this player. Yeah, okay. So there's negativity. That's okay. Ken Holland has to make a decision based on uh, how, how a player fits into his lineup and what he does. And, you know, uh, listen, we all know that Duncan Keith is not uh, the Norris Trophy winning Duncan Keith that he was. We all know what his contract says. But I'm looking at it a little bit differently here. Number one, I think Duncan Keith, when you look at who he was playing with and what the situation was in Chicago, you know what, good luck being a good player there. I heard some similar things about Ryan McDonough in years past and he wasn't any good. And I heard things about Drew Doughty. He wasn't good anymore. You got to look at the whole uh, scenario and the whole situation. Ask yourself this. Why are they bringing Duncan Keith in? They're bringing Duncan Keith in to be a second pair defenseman behind Darnell Nurse. They're bringing Duncan Keith in to provide some real significant influence, not only on the ice, but off the ice for his players. And we, and, and I'm talking about McDavid, Nurse, Dry Seidel and Nugent Hopkins. That's $32 million. They're trying to get a greater return on their $32 million. And they think with Duncan Keith's presence, his history, and what they still think he's capable of doing in a different spot, that that's, worth, uh, that, that, that that's something that they want to do and they want to move the team forward. I can tell you this. There's a number of players there that are really happy Duncan Keith has come in. And so, you know, the criticisms aside, we'll see how it plays out. But I think for the Edmonton Oilers, it's a move that he, Kenny's trying to bet on his team being better come playoff time. Yeah, that's a significant bet, but it's one that you've got to be willing to make, and he is. And you know what? I don't think it's a bad move. Talking with Craig Button. Craig, uh, Bill Guerin, the Wild buyout, Ryan Suter, and Zach Parise. Uh, going back to 2012, when they each signed those 13-year deals, did you know a day like this was going to happen? Well, yeah, certainly, yeah, those 13-year deals, unless your name's Alexander Ovechkin, yeah. have not been very good, right? And so let, let's go back to the, uh, to the, to the CBA the, in the lockout of 2012-2013. You know, there's no more 13-year contracts yeah. because, it, you know, unless you're signing a player at 18 and you're going, okay, that takes us to 31. But when you start signing these players as unrestricted free agents at 26, 27, 28, there's no way you're going to get value out of it. There's, just, there, there's no way. And so, you know, yes, uh, I, I think Ryan Suter is still a, a really good, solid player. I have to believe that the reason he's buying out Ryan Suter is because Ryan Suter refused to waive his no-move clause. I think that Billy Guerin would have been happy to keep Ryan Suter if he would have waived his no-move clause. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's my, uh, that's my speculation. That's what, I'm, that, that's, what I, that's what I think may have happened. Because he, Ryan can still play. I don't think – Zach Parisi – can't play anymore. He's not very good. He's a bottom line player. Does that mean he won't play at a lesser salary? No. But at that dollar figure, there's no there's no value in it exactly. He's a healthy scratch in the playoffs. So and the way he plays, his injuries, they add up. So uh, I, I would be I, I would say not surprised on Zach Parise being bought out 
and my, and my speculation on, uh, on, on, on Ryan Suter is because he wouldn't wave the no move clause. And Bill Guerin said, okay, fine. We're not losing that number one of our young yeah. defensemen to keep you end of story. We're buying you out. That's what I think. Yeah. And listen, Billy Guerin has gone in there and he's established that he's running the team and that it's not going to be run by older players. Mikko Koivu was let go. Eric Stahl was traded. And now Preezy and Suter have been bought out. Billy Guerin's putting a stamp on that team. Uh, one more quickly, uh, Craig. Uh, Senators hire Pierre Maguire. He's 59 uh, years old as senior vice president of player uh, development. So he leaves the world of broadcasting to get back into hockey. Do you ever get tempted to do that, Craig? Uh, I, I don't know if tempted is the right word. I, I mean, and I, I'm not trying to pick on the word, Donnie, but yeah. I mean, being part of a team in the, in, the, in the NHL, I've been part of teams. I've been part of Stanley Cup winning teams. We didn't do any damage to the Stanley Cup, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you, you know, there's an exciting part of it. There's a, there, there really is about being part of a team and trying to build. But, but to be straightforward with you, it, it would take something that would be very unique people-wise, opportunity-wise. It doesn't have to be with the Tampa Bay Lightning, but mm-hmm. something like that that would make me think about it. And I love what I do, guys. I love what I do. I, 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 get, a, I, I, get, a, I get a wide canvas to do a lot of different things that really appeals to me uh, personally and professionally and really work well for me. So what I would say to you is, yeah, you, I, I, I wouldn't close my, my ears uh, to, to, to listening, but... It's going to have to take something that would be really good because uh, I love what I do, and I hey, I wouldn't be able to chat with you guys as much. Well, I was hey. just going to say, if it does happen, there still will be a spot for you once a week on this show, just so you know. I would make it a condition of my employment that perfect. that has to be part of it. Uh, per- per- perfect. <laughs> love it. Craig, thanks for this. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, thanks, guys.